Well, hello there. We got with us today a um, very special guest, president of Third Act Retirement, Tommy Cloud. Um, started his business in 2000, CFP, the only fiduciary financial plan, and a great personal friend of mine. Um, everybody, the one and only Tommy Cloud. Thank you for joining us today, Tommy. Thank you. Thank you, Brad. I really appreciate you uh, taking the time to uh, come on here and, and host this show. Absolutely. Well, we've got an article we want to discuss today. Um, it's about, is a million dollars really enough to retire? Um, so I wanted to discuss that with you and wanted to, first of all, throw a, a bit of a monkey wrench in the topic a little bit. So let's take it home to, you know, something more uh, specific sort in terms of a scenario or a role play, you could say. Oh, I love role play. Oh, Thank no, you. anything but that. Yes. So um, <laughs> let's say we customize the scenario around, you know, ITP Atlanta is a million dollars enough to retire. You know, it's, it seems like the answer is going to vary. The situation is going to vary based on the the geolocation or the rural, the suburban, the in-town living in Buckhead, College Park, varies greatly, right? It does. Um, I like your use of the word geo there. Um, you know, it's, it's a great a great word for you. Now, you. Brett, Thank what you is so the much. name of, of that location where um, they use the, the DPs? What's the name of that place? Oh, that is called The Land. I'm glad you brought that up, Tommy. It's very... Very special place. It, it's called The Land? The Land, yes. Okay, well, we're not, you know, a million dollars is probably not going to be enough for the land because primarily you, you can only use dungeon points. Is that right? No, Tommy, yeah. I can tell you really don't know much about this topic. But, uh, you know, there's mana points, health points, stamina points, all kinds of different points out there to utilize and one of your settlement points for that matter. You know, there's all kinds of mechanics and basic math underlie society, personal, personal development, and so many different areas. I mean, how much time do you really have to go into something like this, Tommy? Good job, Brett. That's a great Thank job. I, had a, I don't want to embarrass you in front of your audience. So I, I know. I, I, <laughs> I appreciate it. Tell me, though, of all the points that are out there, which one is your favorite point? Hard to say. The dungeon points are pretty nice, though. I do like those a lot. Yeah. They offer so many different upgrades and possibilities. Possibilities are really endless. Well, let's get back to fantasy here and talking about a million dollars for retirement. I don't, I don't want to talk anymore about reality. Um, so is a million dollars enough inside the perimeter? And uh, a lot of people listening to this show may not be in Georgia or Atlanta. So Atlanta has an inside the perimeter, which is Interstate 285 and outside the perimeter. And there are locations inside the perimeter that are expensive to live in, and they're usually a little bit north of Atlanta. And there's also locations inside the perimeter that are not so expensive to live in, which are, tend to be south of Atlanta. Could be east or west as well. Mainly just the northern area is quite expensive in some areas. Is a million dollars enough? A million dollars depends on your Social Security and it depends on your debt load. That is the answer for sure. If you have no debt and your Social Security is three thousand a month, which I've seen, I've seen four, four close getting up close close, close to four thousand a month, then you can absolutely live inside the perimeter, north of Atlanta, in the more expensive areas on a million dollars with relative ease. So the answer is, Brett, it depends on your financial situation, how strong it already is. So it's already quite an accomplishment to pack up or stack up and accumulate that kind of money for anybody. And though what percentage of retirees, roughly speaking, is has a seven-figure or higher retirement savings? Oh, yeah. Most Americans die in debt. Uh, <clears throat> you know, I only... You know, really work with wealthy people and, you know, people that have saved money. You know, we, most people are living off of Social Security. 
And then you have people that are living in these nursing homes, these state-run nursing home facilities. It's just, uh, so there's no doubt about it. People that have a million dollars saved up are, are wealthy by any stretch of the imagination. There's some people that, of course, as we know, have tens of millions and hundreds of millions. But, uh, yeah, to have a million dollars sitting in an IRA or a savings account, is, it puts you in, in what you know, I would consider to be the wealthy wealthier categories of even Americans. Certainly you're in the top 1% of the world, but we're talking about just the U.S. It's, yeah, you're still there. Even here in 2021, to have a million dollars saved up would still put you in, in the wealthy category for sure. Well, I can testify from having just some personal conversations with you, Tommy. It's it's hard to assess that question is of is what I have enough mm -hmm. for my situation, for what I want to do, what can I truly do. And I can testify that you really do need somebody qualified and competent on these topics to bring some reality to the mental conversation that you're having or that I was having. Even just breaking down a, a real estate move or purchase, you know, with somebody competent such as Tommy. Um, I appreciate that. And break it all down on paper, every single line item. Like, well, here's your income. Here's what's going out. Here's what you can do, you know. And even though you may doubt it, it's here on paper. Right. The numbers don't lie. So, um, the heart doesn't lie. The gut doesn't lie either, Brad. Thank you for bringing that up. The... Uh, the genius of the uh, hive mind of trillions of bacteria in your GI tract is unassailable. Um, <laughs> so <clears throat> another thing that we've learned personally in our lives, Tommy, is that uh, interruptions to our family domestic marriage situation too can make a big impact. So a lot of people miss out on a, a really good trajectory because the personal, marital, and family uh, situation derails and what was a, a very healthy towards six seven figure trajectory gets curtailed quite a bit it really does i've heard story after story and as people are getting married now you know a lot of people aren't getting married as much anymore and if they do prenuptial popularity has increased uh, over the years um, even for people in their 20s now uh, all the stats point that way but you know, for for people like me that, uh, you know, I was in a marriage where I went from my wife's biggest fan to her biggest critic. And then she got to a point where she said, look, Tommy, I can't go back. I must go forward. forward. That's right. And boy, aren't those powerful words. You know, you could, I'm sure there's a lot of women that, might hear this if they listen to it and they hear those words can't go back must go forward and they they can identify with it they can but yeah that can have a, a big impact on the the financial trajectory and uh, rebuilding so it's not just um, the finance and the income that people have to monitor it's the broader topics too you don't want to ever get in a situation where you have put your spouse at a point where they can't go back and they must go forward. Can you identify with that, Brett? Have you ever been to a, been in a situation where, where you've made your spouse reach that point? Perhaps. Just <laughs> not. I'm so glad you have the laugh track soundboard for these recordings. It's, that's fantastic. You're welcome. So... I guess this comes up a lot because people are, are coming to you and talking to you, customers, um, your clientele. Um, they do a really good job in terms of amassing wealth and savings and retirement. and They don't really have a sound grasp of the numbers. And they really need somebody to help them walk them through it. Um, can you tell me about it? Share a little bit about that and what those conversations are like. Oh, definitely. What, it, what comes to mind one of my clients, and I love all my clients, and I'm thankful to be able to serve them. One of my clients, his name is uh, Jerry, and uh, his wife, Nancy. Jerry has told me numerous times 
when I started working for him, he said, Tommy, I just don't want to have to eat cat food in retirement. And he's, he's so humble. He's so kind. He's so nice and so generous. I, you know, when I looked at this situation, I was thinking, you know, that that's never going to happen. He is in retirement now making a six figure income working part time. And I, I'm just, I've explained to him, you know, go spend some money. You can go do this. You can, you, you, you can enjoy this a little bit. What, what, what would you and your wife like to do? And so I have conversation and it's both ways. He said, you know, I'm so glad that I hired you. He always talks about the sleep test. He said, I sleep really well now, much better than I did with my previous financial planner because I, I can see my plan. I understand why it works. And I have confidence that I'm not going to run out of money and that I am, in fact, going to be able to have a comfortable retirement with my wife. And so the conversations aren't just where the person is in trouble and needs guidance with both the investing and the budgeting and that type of thing. Sometimes they come to me and they're in really great shape and they don't know it. And, it, and it's good for them to find that out to, so they can experience the peace that they really should have uh, after they've made these wise decisions. Yeah, that was a good friend of mine that told me, you know, assets have to serve a purpose at the end of the day. They're not there to exist just by themselves. Um, they should be towards or for something. So uh, it's a good thing to remember. Um, so it sounds like in the process of your work, you have to give people quite a bit of assurance or reassurance. So it's, it's not all just tough, frank conversations, but it's, you're doing much better at this financial planning and saving for retirement thing than you even understand. That's exactly right. <clears throat> They're not all in a situation where they come in and, and I've got to work with them on changing their goals because their goals are stretching them to the point where they're not going to be able to live comfortably or not run out of money. They are going to run out of money if they keep doing what they're doing. Not, not all clients come in like that. So many of my clients come in, in fact, I'd say most come in and they are in good financial shape and they want to continue to be good stewards of their money. They realize humbly that their cognitive ability as they've gone over the age of 60 is decreasing. And as they continue to age, they want someone to be their uh, chief financial officer, so to speak, or kind of be a quarterback and, and kind of help them navigate their financial decisions in retirement when they know that they, um, their body is, um, as all of us are, uh, winding down and their mental capacities are probably a little less than they were years before. So you have a lot of designations and credentials um, out of stations that we mentioned at the beginning of the call in terms of being a CFP, the only planner, fiduciary uh, for your customers. Um, maybe you could personalize your sort of qualifications a little bit in terms of what about your experience or life experience makes you uniquely suited to advise some of these wealthy customers and clientele that isn't typical to maybe some other people in the market. What makes you different or what gives you what you feel is your competitive edge? That's a great question. Appreciate you asking me that. I think a lot of the investing that we see people do, a lot of the advice that people give is okay advice. It's not really super wise. People are being stewards of this money that they're being given. It's, it's really not my money. It's really not your money. We're, we're trying to be stewards of the money that we're being given. And one of the things that we're told is that if we're a good steward, that we'll be given more to manage. And the environment that we're moving into now with bonds at you know, all-time highs, which means their yields are extremely low, and stocks, um, I'm getting ready to publish an article called um, Is the Stock Market Going to Crash? But stocks have averaged about 16% a year for the past 10 years. 
The price to earnings ratio is more than double what it has been historically. We are in a place where diversification is going to be important. And I try to help my clients put a substantial amount of assets into non-correlated asset classes that are not correlated to the U.S. stock market or the global stock market is one of the things that I do. Giving them advice from a biblical perspective, I think being fee only. And, you know, my clients tell me that I respond quickly, that I'm honest with them, that I have integrity. They feel like I have their best interest at heart. And all of these things, as you're trying to, as I try to help my clients grow their wealth and make more money, we're also trying to help my clients see things from God's perspective of my, the God of my understanding, which is the God of the Bible. And I do have clients that are not Christians for sure. Um, however, the advice that I give them is in step with many of the things that I've read and learned about for decades as it relates to how God wants us to be stewards of his money so that we can better be able to do his work here on earth rather than focus on money. The Bible says you can't serve God money. You're either going to love one and hate the other or hate one and love the other. You can't serve two masters. Excellent. Well, Tommy, I really appreciate taking some time to speak with us today. Break down some of these topics. <clears throat> it's more than just dollars and cents. There's a lot of emotion, fear wrapped up in it. Too and, and uh, I know from my personal experience, you need somebody with experience and insight to sort of level set that, break it down with numbers, and, and uh, mark your, your your feelings to reality. Yeah. And so I, I think that is a very valuable thing that uh, some people could offer, or that people could uh, make use of. So, in terms of next steps, you know, say somebody wanted to get in touch with you, um, how might they do that? And um, do you offer any kind of free consultation for potential that's, customers? That's a good question. We do. We have here uh, what we call a retirement ready success call. You can just go on to my website and schedule the call here. We will go over where, where clients are now, where they want to be. And I'll also give them some advice as to what am I doing with my clients, kind of give them tips on what they're doing with my clients. So my website is thirdactsretirement.com. My toll-free number is 1-800-917-5016. My local number is 770-971-2888. Anyone that answers the phone can set up a retirement-ready success call with them, and I'll call them on time. I'll be there for them. Thanks for asking, Brent. Thank you, Tommy. Great speaking with you, man. Have a good one. Likewise.